Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is take just a minute and talk about saving your scene. One of the most important things that you will be doing while working on projects inside of Maya. Yes, indeed. Or, to be honest with you, any application. Any application. And for those of you who might be thinking, you know, why don't you just say, you know, hit the save button or hit control S and move on, I need to stress, I know of a lot of beginner students who lose all kinds of work because they forget or they fail to get into good saving habits. That's right. As a matter of fact, let's talk about one of them students. Oh, no. Mr. Zach Parrish. Oh, no. How's it going, Zach? Hey, how's it going? So, Zach was a student of mine several years back before he became this incredibly talented Maya user. <laughs> and back in those days... Zach was new to the concept of saving. I mean, yeah. he knew how to use a computer, and he could use it well. Yeah. But, you know, he just didn't like the save button. I don't really know why. Well, the deal was I get so carried away in what I was doing. I That's mean, true. modeling, animating, doing whatever. And it was so cool to me that the thought of having to, to reach back into the real world for a minute and remember <laughs> that saving was important was totally alien. I was in dreamland and having a good old time with it. That's right. So when should you save and when should you not save? Well, I have a... I guess you could say a basic rule that mm -hmm. I would follow, and that is if you will cry or get sick if your scene is lost, you better save. That's right. If you, if you can't afford to lose it, then save it. And, and that's really like that little cry meter. It works. <laughs> like if you start working and you create a, a cube, and sure. you're going to start modeling this cube into a head. You know, so far it's just a cube. Yeah. If you lose it, are you going to cry? No. Nah. So do you need to save right then? Nah. No. So you start manipulating it. You spend 10 minutes on it. If you lose it, will you cry? Well, now your little meter is maybe starting to move a little. I might get a little upset. It's a little upset, but yeah. maybe not cry. So do you need to save? It'd be a good idea, but if you forget at that point in time, well, it's not going to be the end of the world. Now let's say you've spent an hour and your head is coming along wonderfully. If you lose it, will you cry? Yes. At this point, yes, you're going to tear up nicely. Mm -hmm. So your scene better be safe. Now, back to my story with Mr. Zach Parrish. Yeah. In the classroom environment in which our course was taking place in, I had the ability to take control of the students' workstations. Yeah. This was done through the Robotel system that was installed in the room. So it's like you'd suddenly lose control of your computer, and the instructor is now controlling it for you. That's right. You would get locked out of your keyboard and your mouse, and the instructor would be seeing the same thing on your screen that you see. I would love to do this for, to Zach. Basically, he'd spend a good 45 minutes to an hour. He's in there modeling, tongue hanging out the side, just really going to town. He would wait until I had that total intense look of concentration for like over an hour. <laughs> and then just that little sadistic streak would, would fire up. And, and suddenly I would, I would tune into his machine without grabbing control of it to look at one thing. And yeah. that's the title bar. I would look for the magical word. Untitled. That's right. Because if you see the word untitled at the top of your Maya window, that means you have yet to save your scene. That's right. And with Zach, I would just simply grab control and slowly move the mouse over to the close button on the mm -hmm. far right-hand side and click it. Yep. And you'd get this little dialogue that would pop up. And it was great because at that time, Zach would look up at me quickly yeah. and be like, Please, no, no, no. <laughs> and he'd go, no, and then he'd click don't save. That's right, and that, of course, would cause Maya to, to shut down and nothing would be safe. That's right, let me it, cancel out of this. It did not take doing that many times Yeah. before Zach was uh, very, very good at saving. Well, it's called paranoia at that point. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, true. I'd kind of start to get the twitches. Uh, if I ever heard anybody, like, even wince at anything, I'd reach up and hit control S as quick as I could. So now you guys should have your projects set yes. as we did that several lessons back, so or several videos back, excuse me. So let's go ahead and save our scene, and our scene's going to be saved to the right place. So we'll come down to save scene as, and what I want to do is let's go ahead and go over to the, yeah, there we go, that'll work. Let's drop down to the bottom. Okay. Uh, files of type. So, yeah, there we go. So when saving our scene, we've got two different ways we can save it. We can save the scene as a Maya binary file, which mm -hmm. is going to have an extension .mb, or we can save the scene as a Maya ASCII file, which will give us the .ma extension. So what's the difference? Well, with a binary file, basically you can't get inside the file itself and, and really manipulate much of anything outside of doing it through Maya. Yeah. With an ASCII file, though, you can open your file up inside a text editor and make changes. Like Notepad. That's right. This is something that is very, very useful a little bit later on when you guys that are just learning how to use Maya become a lot more proficient with yeah. it. There are certain times that you may want to reorder attributes or, or take something out or even change versions of Maya. Sure. And you can do this kind of stuff through editing the text file 
um, whatever file you've saved out, your ASCII file, though. That's right. So in this case, though, we're just going to go ahead and leave it as a Maya binary, which is the default. Well, so there is one thing I do want to show sure. before we actually save the scene, and this is something that helps a lot of beginner students out, and in fact, even some advanced uh, students, is you'll notice that the save scene uh, option does, like a lot of options in Maya, have its own little options box. Sure. So if we open this up, uh, we get a couple of things, but the most important guy we see right here, incremental save. Oh, yes. Now, what this is going to do is allow you to automatically increment your save file, meaning if you just get into the habit of hitting Control-S as a, hot, uh, a shortcut or hotkey mm -hmm. in order to save, it will automatically create a new file for your save, and it'll add a number to it. So you'll end up with, like, Talented Ball and then Talented Ball 1, Talented Ball 2, and so on. The reason this is important is, let's say you're working on a project later on, you get into Maya, and, you know, maybe you're modeling a head, like Buzz was saying earlier. And you get the nostrils looking pretty good, and you move on to the mouth, and you mess something up really bad. If you've been saving all of your work to a single file, you can't go back to before you were working on the mouth. There's no way to do it. That's true, and I'll give you an even better one. Mm. What if you happen to set something up, and you hit Control-S to do the save, and let's say Maya crashes at that point, or Windows Your crashes. Computer crashes. Yeah. yeah. And now you go to reopen it back up. And you try to open that Maya file back up, and it's now corrupt. Oh, I got story time on that. Just a real, real quick one. Working on a, a two-week project in the class when I was but a lonely student long ago, <laughs> and I had started two weeks early. So we got a whole month's worth of work. Character animation involving two characters, nice set, everything was looking awesome. And I go to make a play blast for my... Uh, for my character. Now, we don't want to give you guys the impression that Maya is in any way an unstable program. In fact, it's one of the most stable 3D applications I've used. But I went to make a preview or a play blast of my animation, and the animation was so long that it used up all the RAM in the computer, and it crashed out my entire machine and corrupted my file. Mm. I had been saving to only one file. <laughs> I had no backup file. And so I lost an entire month's worth of work. Yeah, that's no fun. So incremental saves can be very handy. And I do want to mention how imp uh, how easy it is to work with these, but it does get confusing if you if you don't know how. So I'm going to switch on incremental save. We won't worry about limiting incremental saves for now, and I'll click save scene. Now, of course, we get to name our file. So I'll call this talented ball, like so. And when I click save, of course, we go right back to our Maya desktop. If I go back under file and open, you'll notice all I see is talented ball, like so. Now, once I start saving again, for example, if I hit Control, let's make a change of some kind so that Maya will allow us to save. If I hit Control S now, which is just my shortcut for saving, of course, I could go to File and Save again, and we'll get a warning. No changes to save. Right. So I want you guys also to be aware of that. If you don't make any changes, Maya will warn you. So now if I go to File and Open, we now have a new folder called Incremental Save. Very nice. If you just open Talented Ball, you're just going to get the most recent save you've made. This is where a lot of students get confused because they believe that they haven't actually made the incremental save. If you open up your incremental saves, inside this we have my, uh, talentedball.mb, and here's talentedball001. Those numbers we were talking That's about. That's the first one we made, and so on. So as we continue to, to hit Control S, we're going to get a big long list of files, which is great if we make some sort of critical error and need to go back to a time before we made that error. That's right. I wanted to make sure that I got that pointed out to everybody, uh, which is going to come in very handy later on when you really get into using Maya a lot. So with that, we that's have saved our scene. That's right. And you guys, save your scenes as well. Please keep and your scenes saved. With that, that's going to conclude this video. Thanks a lot.